Bernard Arnold is currently the richest person on the planet. He owns the conglomerate LVMH, a company that owns 75 luxury brands. Last year, the fashion giant had a revenue of $94 billion and a profit margins of $16.5 billion. Arnold's personal wealth is $212.5 billion at the moment of the recording. You know what they say, you don't become a billionaire by being a nice person. Today we will uncover how Bernard Arnold became the richest person on the planet and why do people call him Wolf in Kashmir. Firstly, we need to look at his childhood to see what made him the way he is. This isn't a rags to riches story, he wasn't poor. His dad owned a manufacturing and civil engineering company and he sent young Bernard to a prestigious school in France for the rich. When Bernard was 25, his father made Bernard run the family company. Bernard switched the company to real estate business in 1976 and in 1981, as the French socialist rose to power and threatened to tax the rich, Bernard moved to the USA. In the USA, Bernard hopped in a taxi cab. The driver talked about how he likes France and Bernard asked him if he knew who the president of France is. The driver said he doesn't know, but he knows who Christian Dior is. With this encounter and his mother, his mother gave him the passion for luxury. She loved Christian Dior. Bernard became obsessed with Dior. Christian Dior's parent company was in bankruptcy and the French government was looking for a buyer. Bernard decided to buy it. That move was insane. Firstly, it was a failing company. Secondly, Bernard put $15 million of his own money in the acquisition. And third, he didn't know anything about the luxury business. He was in real estate, but he had a mindset for fashion. And the most elitist product in every line that we are selling throughout the world. It was a risky move at the time because this was much bigger than the company of my father. With that mindset, he sold most of the brand on the Bozoc Saint Fresh and kept only Christian Dior and the department store Le Bon Marché. He fired 9,000 people. With these moves, Bernard turned the failing Christian Dior into a profitable company, earning $2 billion. But still, this is just the start. Luxury fashion companies alone are not that strong, but when they combine together, that's a different story. Louis Vuitton and Moet Hennessy decided to merge into the biggest luxury company in the world. Louis Vuitton was run by Henry Rakamir and Moet Hennessy by Alain Chevalier. These two didn't get along and there were many things going on. We made a video about Louis Vuitton where we explain this in more detail. Check it out after this video. In short, Chevalier bought Karl Lagerfeld as a successor of Henry. Henry got scared that Chevalier would take over the whole company and got his friend Bernard Arnold as help. Chevalier had a secret meeting with Bernard Arnold and managed to convince him to come at his side for a promise of higher shares in the company. When Rakamir heard what happened, he went mad. But it was too late. Arnold secured 24% of LVMH. Few days later, he bought more shares for $600 million, pushing his shares to 37.5% and this made him the largest shareholder of the company. By early 1989, he owned 43.5% of the company's shares and held 35% of its voting rights and he made his father the chairman of the supervisory board. Bernard Arnold betrayed Rakamir and Chevalier and both of them decided to step out of the company. After the hostile takeover, he went on a buying spree, acquiring companies like they are toys. Bellotti in 1993, Celine in 1996, Marc Jacobs and Sephora in 1997, Takior in 1999, Fendi in 2001, Bulgari in 2011 and Tiffany Co. in 2020. His nickname is Wolf in Kashmir, so you can guess that there aren't many nice stories about these acquisitions. For example, like with Tiffany. They had a deal before the pandemic. After the pandemic started, Arnold wanted a price cut. 
Tiffany refused, so Arnold took them to court and he ended up buying the company for roughly $16 billion. Interesting thing is that three years after buying Tiffany Co., Arnold doubled their profits. He views his empire as a family business. Arnold eats once a month with his children and asks them about advice. His daughter Delphine is the CEO of Christian Dior. Anton is the CEO of the family holding company. Alexander is the vice president of Tiffany Co. Friedrich is the CEO of Dark Cure. And lastly, Jean is the head of marketing development and Louis Vuitton watches. After Bernard's career ends, his children will receive 20% of the family's holding company, each of them. And they can't sell their shares for 30 years. But he still didn't choose his successor. He's also involved in some controversies. Recently, he was accused of making transactions that are involved in money laundering. But it's still under investigation. LVMH owns some media companies in France. These media companies are about finances. And LVMH is in the luxury business. So what is Bernard Arnault planning? We don't know what he's planning, but we know what he is thinking. Better said, we know his mindset, which makes him so successful. Luxury is a highly competitive business. Arnault's business philosophy is, how can I create desire? That's the main question. His children said in an interview that he is highly competitive and he doesn't like to lose. He doesn't care how he'll get a brand, he will just do it. He removes lies of unnecessary management and cuts costs. Arnold wants the desire for the brand to be the same in 10 years as it is today, which means he's looking long term. Another proof that he looks long term is an interview in which he said he doesn't care about 6 month profits. He cares about five-year profits. Arnold puts a lot in the marketing. His companies are everywhere. Billboards, magazines, tennis tournaments. Bernard Arnold buys companies with the mindset of holding them forever. He betrayed his friends and exploited his partners. But today, LVMH covers alcohol, jewelry, fashion, and hotels. They expanded to the US and China, the two biggest markets on the planet. And they own 75 luxury brands that generated $16.5 billion in profit. The best part about Bernard Arnold is that he doesn't show signs of slowing down. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our channel. We have tons of videos like this. And don't forget to subscribe.